This video was supposed to be released on Friday, but because I had to re-edit that one video, it got delayed. And honestly, I don't feel like doing three videos for this week as well. You might get three videos, you might not. I haven't decided yet. But uh, this video was supposed to finish last week. Uh, and it's a, it's a great subject. And I, I honestly want to talk about it a bit more. Is uh, the setup. That is... The, the, the day or two of just everything being, re being prepared and set up so that when the people come in, it's all ready. And it's just this amazing, amazing experience. And I'm going to talk about it as much as I can through this video and possibly more after that. So let's get into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is having the right tools ready to go. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but oh my gosh, it is so useful. If you have the right tools, you can do the job a lot easier. So you have already planned out and said, okay, these are the tools I need. These are the things that will make my job a lot easier. We should put saran wrap around these machines because they will be handled a lot better. We should have ways so that the machines are easy to get into and easy to set up. We should, uh, oh, the crows, I remember those guys. They kind of harassed me a bit. Oh, that's the, the, um, the convention center in Tacoma. Uh, we should have all the equipment we need ready to go and easy to set up right there. And we should uh, have any anything that we are worried about or need to think about, we need to set up quickly. Uh, like this guy is doing. He's just putting on legs as fast as he can because that's his job. And all he's doing is using a special wrench and that's it. And uh, vids are really simple and easy to set up. You just set them up, plug them in, they're ready. But that's the thing is you have to have everything kind of, all the tools ready so that when you're asked, you can just get to it very, very quickly. And that, that really eases things up. Uh, setup, if you have the right tools, is the difference between, uh, you know, taking all day long for even a single row, as opposed to, you know, having log large breaks, which we're going to talk about uh, later on. Another big thing you ought to have is just people who are ready to work. Trained people who know what they're doing, and that can change everything. Uh, one of the first, one of the shows I did, uh, when I first got there, it was just me and two other guys, and we were setting up all the arcade machines. And then we were taking all, down all the arcade machines, and it was just so much work, uh, we spent 14, 15 hours to do it. And it was so difficult to do that it, it was honestly very frustrating. So I was like, okay, I need to get the right tools ready. I need to just do stuff so that, so that everything is set up for the next time I do this. And, you know, the next time I did it, it was a lot easier. And the same thing happened at Surge. Uh, we had a good crew, but our setup and our takedown needed some work. So I called in a friend who I knew was pretty good at his job. I said, hey, can you help out? You know what you're doing. And, oh my gosh, he got things done done so fast that we were able to leave early. We were not expecting that because he just knew what he was doing and he could help us out. And that is the difference between an untrained and a trained person. A trained person will get stuff done a lot faster just because they know what they're doing. And that is a chance for uh, anybody to do. The goal when you do set up is to make it boring. And just so that, you know, you constantly have breaks and everybody knows what they're doing and all the equipment has made it so that everything is being done really, really fast. Uh, I think the coolest example I've heard is a buddy of mine and I were fighting a fire near his house and it was getting closer and closer. And he looked at me and he said, you know, I remember doing this when I was in the Navy and We'd have to practice how to respond to fires over and over and over again. And it could be while I was asleep, so I learned how to do it in my sleep. 
And, you know, we, we started talking about it and we finally real, realized that all this training was so that he could do it in his sleep. It was just all reflexes. So we were fighting this fire and we knew what we were doing because we had done it so many times. And the same thing happens with, um, with setup. If you do it right, everything will be super, super easy. And that means uh, setup or takedown, you know, you're, you're just doing it so fast. You're doing it so well that it becomes boring. And that is your plan. Your plan is to make this as dull as you can possibly get it. Well, not this speech. It was actually very, very nice. But, uh, you know, that's, that's a weird thing to explain to people, that you're trying to make something, a part of a convention, really dull. But that really is a goal of yours. You are trying to make it so that when everything is done, you're just doing it so fast that you kind of lose track of time. Instead of, you know, me and two other guys doing it for 14 hours, it's like me and a good crew do it in like four hours and everything is done. And we're just like, wow, we've got the rest of the day. This is great. I want to continue doing this. And that is the goal. You know, just get everything in, get everything set up and get everything ready as fast as you can. And in such a way that everybody knows what they're doing and it's just kind of dull and you're just kind of waiting for the next shipment. And that's, a, that's another thing you're, you're probably not imagining is each thing that shows up, uh, you don't have everything arrive at the same time. It arrives in waves. The trucks go out with, uh, or they arrive with equipment and then they go out to pick up more equipment. And during that time, you have these lulls and you want these lulls because that means that you are doing everything correctly. Hurry up and wait is the lulls you are that I was just talking about. And that's the thing. The empty room slowly fills by waves. And you want to get those waves so well done that you don't notice that it's being done so quickly. And these guys are placing tape for the placement of machines. And it's just, you know, this is what we need done. This is how we're going to do it. This is where everything should be. And it's just done so quickly and so efficiently that... You don't even think about it. It's just like, okay, we're done with this part. Okay, here's another shipment. Let's do this. Let's get this on. And, you know, you have just experienced people who know what they're doing. They just take this empty room that you're seeing right here, and they slowly but surely fill it. And in between that time, you have these lulls, these times where you get to hang out with everybody and you get to talk about what you're seeing. And, you know, if a game is set up, you kind of sit down and play it a bit. And yeah, this is uh, the empty room I was talking about in a previous video. And you just kind of go, okay, hey, okay, uh, anything we should be doing right now? Uh, where should, you know, some of these things go? Where, where are the keys? Uh, and then you just take breaks and you sit down and you just hang out and you talk about stuff. And that, I think, is one of my favorite things in the world is just sitting down and talking about stuff. Because that means you can experience the entire show a lot better than anybody else is expecting. And it means you can get stuff like Dance Dance Revolution out, you can play some of that new Space Invaders, and if you do it correctly, you know, you just have this time to just sit down and just kind of write and take pictures and talk to folks. And that that's, that doesn't sound like much to you, but for me, I think that's like the best opportunities when you're setting up because you can just see how everything works and you can, and you, you just see the machinery and you just see how uh, everything is set up and it's just wonderful to me. And I'm trying to figure out how I got here. Anyway, uh, and you know, this, this is the great opportunity to interview people. As an anthropologist, it's just that, that moment when you just start to see stuff slowly fill in and you're just like, oh, I like this. I know what I'm doing here. And then you hear another truck come in and you're like, okay, it's time to go. Time to pick up the pink Donkey Kong where uh, Pauline is in charge instead of the other stuff. Okay, you start to start to see things slowly move, move in. And it's because of those breaks, those lulls in time that you can just start to see 
how it moves. And you're, you're like, okay, we've got these machines, but we haven't decided where they're going yet. So let's start making, you know, decisions on what, what each row is for, especially when it's vids at the Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show. You start to make decisions because you have time and things get prepared better. And that's the, the entire goal. By making it boring, you can make things better. As strange as that sounds for you. A thing you should probably think about is you don't need everybody to be an absolute expert at what they do. People can be trained. And, you know, if you have people who are like, I'm here, I'm ready to help, you know, just give them a job. Uh, teach them how to use the the hand carts. And that's a pretty simple job. Or tell them to spot somebody with a hand cart until they can figure things out. And slowly but surely they figure stuff out and you start to show them, okay, this is how you turn on a, uh, a vid. This is how you kind of assemble a pinball machine. And they figure it out slowly but surely. And you can just sort of show them uh, the the area. And if you get, if you have all the time, you can just start setting people up really fast. And, you know, by the second or third shipment, they know what they're doing really, really well. And they're ready to go. So you have this amazing opportunity to talk about, you know, what you saw and why you're at the show and why they're at the show. And, you know, just kind of uh, talk story about all the, the things going around you. And, you know, once they can get into it, they, they, know what, they know what they're doing. But that doesn't mean you need to know everything there is. There's still people who are just very much so more technical at it who know like the electronics within the machines and how to fix them and how to do things. And, you know, they're going to be, their jobs are so much easier because you have some basic guys setting up the, the basics of the pinball table so that they can do the more technical part. And, you know, there's, you know, if there's some small problem with a vid, you know, you set the machine up, you put it where it needs to be, and then you go tell somebody who's more technical and that guy can fix it. He can take care of it faster and that's one of the great parts is, you know, you don't have to be an expert. You just have to know that there are experts there. You need experts, but you also need the basic people there as well. And it it's an incredible balance, but it's very important that you have both. Another thing about setting up, and you probably, and, and you haven't thought about it, is you need food breaks. You need uh, places uh, with food, snacks for people who are, you know, between shipments and they need a chance to just sit down and chat with each other about stuff. And it doesn't have to be important stuff, just a chance to chat. And then near dinner, every show I've done has done uh, a food time where you just kind of sit down, you eat some pizza, you talk about stuff, and it's, it's a nice break from everything. And this break allows you to kind of look at the finalized stuff you're working on and it gives everybody an extra amount of energy because they uh get this opportunity to talk and they get to an opportunity to eat they know what they're doing and you know you'll just see them start to just chat with each other about what needs to be done or you know how they're doing and what what's going on with their lives and they'll just start moving around looking at the machines going, okay, oh, these machines need to be over here, or oh, this leg needs to be fixed, and oh my gosh, Tacoma is gorgeous at, from this angle. And, you know, you just start to stop and go, you know, this empty room that I saw when I walked in, it's, it's starting to fill up. It's almost finished. Isn't this amazing? I've been watching this happen, and until now, I haven't thought about it. But here it is, a room almost ready to go. And that, that's a really cool moment when you get to see that and you just kind of, you're munching on your pizza and you're, you're filling up with, you know, energy from the food and you just go, wow, the room's ready. I'm ready to go. Ultimately, the reason why you do the setup and the reason why the setup is so amazing it, isn't just because you saw a room fill up through slow and deliberate work. 
it's because you got to hang out with friends and you got to, you know, relive your childhood a little bit. You know, each one of these games, you feel like you're in Christmas because you're looking at them. You don't, you don't know what the games are going to be until they arrive. And you, some of them you see and you're just like, wow, that's a piece of art. This game, for instance, as soon as I saw it, I was just like, whoa, that is amazing. And then you just kind of go in and you, you kind of walk with your friends and you talk about the show and why you're doing stuff. You've eaten, everything is ready. You're doing the finalized stuff and, you know, everything has been planned out correctly so that it was nice and kind of boring so you can hang out with your friends. And that's, that's kind of the point. The entire show is a chance to make friends with people who are in the same interest as you. It's your chance to go and look at things that you love. And you're like, I I love this subject. And the people who are going to be there at setup are probably much closer to uh, the blast zone than anybody else. And because of that, you can just kind of sit down and be like, Hey, it's this game. I've been hearing about it. Or, Oh yeah, that's, that's made by that Chinese company. Yeah. I love that game. Or, oh my gosh, that's a two-player pinball machine. That's that's really cool. Or, have you seen the indie guy? He set up his own game. Or, oh, hey, does that game work? And you just can look at stuff and you're just like, wow, that's cool. That's cool. It's, it's like it's Christmas. And you're with your friends. And these friends love this subject that you do as well. So you get, you know, this great opportunity to just do all this cool stuff together. And after a while, these friends become good friends. At the last Northwest Pinball and Arcade Show, as I was leaving, I shook everybody's hand and I looked at them and I just went, these guys are my friends. I'm glad I did this because I made, because these people turned into my friends and I got to experience this great, great thing because of it. And, you know, I get to pass this on to later generation and the, the, the next generation is going to love this because of this camaraderie that is built amongst friends who love (laughs) arcade games. So that was uh, the setup and why I enjoy it. And it's such a cool subject where you just watch this empty room start to fill and the entire time you're hanging out with people who who quickly become friends and you start to learn techniques and learn how the culture moves and works And it's just such a fun experience. And I wish you could have it, uh, but, you know, you can't. You only get the convention itself. Isn't that weird? You miss out on what I think is one of the coolest parts because you're just the convention goer. You don't don't move into the circle as much. Weird, huh? Well, uh, I'll catch you later. I think the next video will be how to prepare yourself for the convention, and that's very different from uh, how to prepare a convention itself. So, uh, catch you all later. Bye!